Hey folks, welcome back to another Battling Brushes. Uh, this week I'm going to be taking care of Nelly and the guitar fatty. And then uh, Rob's going to be taking care of a couple of groups of zombies for us this week. So uh, without further ado and uh, no more yammering, well, let's get down to the table and see what we got for you today. All right, so with Nelly, we're going to be taking care of uh, the dress first. The apron is probably going to come last as far as that's concerned because it's going to be a white on this darker brown color. Uh, but the uh, brown that I'm using for this is a scrag brown uh, so that uh, it's, it's darker, but it's not the darkest brown that uh, is out there, um, which is what we kind of wanted with with Nelly anyway because uh, her... her top part, blouse, bustier, whatever, I don't, know, I don't know what you call it, is going to be a darker brown. So we wanted to go with a, 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 a brown, but not one that was so dark that uh, it didn't provide enough differentiation between the two. So here, again, we're just trying to get uh, as good a coverage as possible. Mm -hmm. So now I've switched to a smaller brush. We're going to go back and do the white on uh, the apron and then her shirt up here as well. Um, switching to a smaller brush because um, there's a little bit more detail work going on here and I want to make sure I don't get, uh, I want to get as little white uh, on other places as possible. So uh, it takes a little bit of a, a finer touch here. So we got to use that smaller brush. Mm -hmm. back and do the uh, flesh tone for her arms, face, and neck there. So. Now we're going to go back and do the, uh, uh, whatever this thing is called, blouse, bustier, uh, I have no idea. It is the upper torso as far as I'm concerned. technical difficulty with my camera so I, I was doing some work when I thought I was on camera but I wasn't um, so I uh, actually did uh, the little brown stripe at the bottom of her skirt already and then I also dry brushed a little bit of a lighter brown onto that scrag brown I used a uh, death claw this was the base coat scrag brown and then I used a little bit of uh, death claw brown uh, to go on top of that just as a not really a dry brush. I was mainly just uh, worried about the edges of the skirt, um, and then the um, the 
uh, stripe at the bottom is a morning brown, the same brown that I did her her uh, blouse with. Not blouse, but whatever that thing is up there. Now for her hair, I am going to be doing something that I don't know if it's going to work or not, so we'll see. Um, but I'm using a uh, army painter, uh, Chaotic Red, to uh, be the base coat of her red hair, which is actually orange. Uh, so I wanted I wanted a deep red color, and as you can see, that's a really 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 deep red there, um, almost like a brown red, and that's what I was wanting to. Uh, that's what I was kind of looking for. Um, normally for a dark red, I would use something like a, a feast in red or a corn red, but that's just a little bit too bright for what I wanted here. So I went ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try this. And we'll we'll see how it works. Agrax Earthshade has a little bit of a brownish tint to it, so that's what we kind of want with this. We want that uh, want that earthen tone shade coming out. Uh, so, and again, we want to make sure that we try not to get it too much onto the uh, white that's there. Next, I'm going to be taking some Nuln Oil and uh, going over the white areas, the shirt and whatnot, I'm using a smaller but not a really small brush for this. Um, and again, we're just trying to get into the cracks and crevices of that apron so that it provides some detail and shade. And we're going to come back and touch it back up with a little bit of white so that um, it still kind of pops a little bit there. All right, so the Agrax Earthshade is going to come in here. And just make all those locks of hair just really stand out. Give good definition to it. And while we're waiting on Nelly to dry with all of the shades that we were putting on there, I decided to go ahead and start on the Guitar Fatty. And uh, as you can see, I went ahead and just used a uh, Zandri Dust uh, to get his uh, base layer of skin going, just like I did on the other zombies. I'm going to be using Zandri Dust on all of the fatties. Uh, just like the, I like the pallid color that it has. So right, not for this tunic, we're going to go ahead and go with a uh, brown. And uh, the tunic, the head thing here, it kind of wraps around the body. Uh, we're going to leave that for a different uh, color, we think. Yeah, definitely. And uh, But the tunic here I'm going to put as a uh, Deathclaw brown. Um, it's a very, uh, it's a lighter brown, not really a tan though. And uh, again, I'm just trying to keep it different than the other models that I've already painted. So, um, you can really, that's one of the cool things about this is that you can just uh, make it whatever colors you really want it to be. Mm -hmm. And 
now for the cowl, we're gonna go ahead and go with this uh, Averland Sunset. Um, kind of a yellow color, but it's not bright. It's kind of a dull yellow color, and it's gonna be for the cowl that's right around here, and then coming around his back as well. So, let's go ahead and get to that. So I've uh, started with the uh, blood gore that's going to be on the zombie, and I started with the base color of uh, corn red. And corn red is going to be a, a, a deep uh, a deep red, uh, not as deep as the uh, chaotic red that we used earlier for uh, the base color of Nellie's hair, but still a good uh, color of red there. You can see how it's kind of nastifying him up a little bit. But now what we're going to do is we're going to hit him with a coat of Mephiston Red, which is going to brighten up some of the spots. And then finally, just a few dabs here and there of Evil Sun Scarlet, which will uh, make some of those uh, bloody areas pop a little bit more. But uh, what the only thing I've really tried to do is he's got a pretty big gash right here. And of course, the big gash that he's trying to hold together with his stomach. So uh, I'm, I'm in, uh, you, letting gravity do its work here and the blood's probably pouring down his leg here and down his leg over here. And then of course he's probably got some gore from the last uh, snack that he had um, coming down his chest as well. So again, a little bit of blood on his hands here and of course blood over here uh, where he's holding his belly together. Not a whole lot. Uh, I don't want to overdo it, but at the same time I, I do want it to make it look like it's a dude that's been causing and some trouble. Now all we're really going to be doing is uh, touching up where he has, you know, this is the next color up. This is the Mephiston Red. And we're not going to try to get down into the gullet there where there is this huge gash, but because we want that to kind of be the uh, the places where he's, you know, not the most, that's, that's where the shadows are and that type of thing. So just dabbing a little bit here and there. I'm going to be going against the grain of his tunic down there. Highlighting some of the edges up here. And over here as well. Just so that there's, a, there's another color red there that, that pro provides a little bit of a 3D effect. And of course up here on his chin a little bit the folds okay so we're just really kind of providing depth Sam 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 you're doing a great job but what else is new you always do great work well I tell you, it feels good to be back. It feels good to be back on pattern and being able to knock out the things I got to do. So uh, this week, I've got a couple of different looking guys. Uh, I'm going to take care of these two guys and show you guys how these go. And then next week, what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the last girl zombie. And along with Sam, I'm going to kind of show you a little bit of my version of doing a few things on how to try to get things to go pretty quickly. So, with that said, why don't we get down to the table and get to work on this week's Battle and Brushes. Let's go. Okay, so taking a look at these creepy looking guys, you kind of wonder what you want to do with them. I mean, they're really just... What's really going to stand out on these guys? Well... I'll tell you what I think I'm going to do. I think for this zombie here, we're going to keep it pretty, pretty simple. Uh, we're going to go with brown clothing. We're going to keep his pants black, but we're going to make sure that we get all that flesh. Now, like I said last time, the most important thing is probably what we're going to have to do is paint the flesh first. So we're going to take that palette witch flesh, which really works well, because then when we go over the green, 
it really gives that disgusting look and we'll do it all in a green wash again because that seems to look pretty good and we want to stay pretty consistent with the rest of our guys so in a nutshell what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slop this flesh on real quick and just make sure that we get all the areas we're not worried about anything else but getting the flesh and if we mess up and we get over onto anything else that is perfectly fine because in a nutshell we will be painting over everything so we can be afford to be a little sloppy here and sometimes it's good to kind of start off with all the sloppy stuff first because that kind of helps you just kind of get everything into a quick perspective so we're gonna make sure and I'm using a, an old brush not even using my good brush I don't care because I'm just slapping this this flesh on real quick and we'll take our other buddy here and we'll do the same thing now him it looks like he's got a opened up midsection there but he's got hair wow that's cool zombie with hair he's got a little fryer tuck working so we're just gonna slap on this flesh real quick let's see if we got any digits sticking out yeah we got toes sticking out I think I'm gonna leave the pants black because I can always go over that dry brush it and really make it stick out a bit so I think I like that idea so I'm gonna be a little bit more careful on his pants we got his head and we're not worried about all the rest of this stuff so let's let these dry for a few minutes and then we'll move on to our next step. Okay, with these guys I decided to kind of do something a little different here. I kind of want, because they always have these green hood things. So I decided to go with that. And I thought it would look pretty cool with the brown. I don't know why, but that's what I went with. So we're going to let that, see where that's running down here. And we're just going to run along there. And just be very careful. Remember, always start on the outside and work your way in. Because you don't want to double paint anything. It's really a pain in the neck at times. And there we go. I think... Uh, I think that looks pretty good, especially with the black undertone. What happens is here is that you get that kind of really kind of dark. That green starts to settle in as a dark color. Um, I'm almost tempted to go all the way with it. Um, just all the way down to here and then maybe brown up his pants. Matter of fact, why don't we just be adventurous? see how it looks and we can always change it right because after all nothing has to stay the way you think it does you can make anything you want however you want it's really up to you and what you have in your head yeah you see I kind of like this a little bit better because then what we're gonna do is we're gonna we'll come around on the brown there and That'll kind of fit in pretty good with this guy, being the creep that he is. There we go. And I don't think the two greens will clash. You know, because we're gonna we're actually going to go over him with a a, a camel wash, an Athrian camel. Which would be pretty nice. I think it'll work out very well. So here we go. We got his top dress part in. So that looks all right. We're gonna do the same thing with this fella here. Um, let me make sure I can see him. He's a little more. He's more of a wreck here. This guy here. So. 
we're just gonna very quickly it's more of his skin is showing so we're not too worried about we want to make sure that we very careful over here and when we come around here and then when we come around here we want to be careful also and just kind of boom 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 and we'll really highlight that with a nice dry brush over and we'll try to bring out some of those colors a little bit better we'll make that green really kind of we don't want that green to really stick out we want it to kind of blend in with how disgusting this dude is and that's exactly what we're trying to accomplish here so coming around his front section here we're just trying to get this area here so these guys are totally done a certain way and here we go I'm gonna come up and I think that's gonna be it for this guy particularly all right I think that's all the green that we're gonna get in on him so let's let this dry and we'll come right back all right so just to speed things up a little bit I painted their pants on so we got a good look at how those go on and they look pretty good and I just threw this wash over this guy's but just for those of you that didn't see it last week let's just do it again with this guy over here so we can see exactly what we're doing and I'm using a uh, camo shade here uh, wash from GW and all we're going to do is we're going to take and we're just going to work that right over all his bones over his head you know we want to get that in there real good and we want to move that wash around you'll hear me say that a lot and we, all we want to do is just get this in here and really kind of really make that that uh, shade really work for us on this guy and you can see that it is working pretty hard because there he is you can see how ghoulish now he looks with just a simple wash over that pallid witch flesh and that's exactly what we're looking for so we're gonna let that dry let that all come together a bit and then we'll move on to our next step here and just get this guy right where we need to now I realized last week I was under such a gun that during the live event I didn't finish up something so I want to do that real quick and um, as you can see, we got our little nun here, all happy and ready to fight everything. And you see how dark she is. Well, what I wanted to do was I, I took a very, uh, from Vallejo, a sky gray, and just took a little bit of that paint there and worked it into my brush. And all I want to do is very lightly just take it and just go over that black just a little bit and all I'm trying to do is give her a little bit of shadowing because you know if you wear black it just doesn't doesn't really just shine up there you know like totally black it's not like a cartoon or something so if you notice now all of a sudden she's got a little depth to her and you can see on the front here just taken and lightly going over this area it's going to give her a little bit more depth and you don't have to worry about going over the armor too much yeah I mean you you know because it's dry brushing it's kind of really getting in there real good and we want to make sure that we get every single part of of this and as you can see now she's got some definition in the back here which we really want and in the front and that looks a hundred percent better than what we had than just a plain black it gives her some depth and that's what we really really are going for and it's the same thing that we're going to do with these guys below here we're just going to take a little bit of that black and we're going to work it off and since we always go over our bases anyways I always like to take and just take and try to make sure that my brush is exactly the way I want it and how it's going to go on to the miniature 
And as you see, that's that's just about right where I want it. Because of the green the way it is, all I want to do is I want to make I want to dinge that up a little bit. And you can see right there. And I'm gonna go over his boots. Everything with our boy here. And we're not gonna be too shy about it. Because exactly what we want to do is really kind of work that gray in there and you know for me they're dead they've been dead and I really kind of want them to have a dingy dusty look like they just came out of the ground you know we don't want them wearing the best clothing unless they ate the guy and put it on afterwards you know maybe that's could have been what they've done but by just taking this instead of having this as bright as it is we can just dinge it up with the gray and you can see what the result that we get it really kinda sells the point and this is just a quick way to get zombies done you know because there are so many of these guys and you want them to look decent when you're playing and you have your your friends over and stuff like that but by just taking just a little bit of gray and going over and it really just dinges everything up try not to get the flesh I mean you worked hard to get that flesh that green and just using your brush and then voila that's what we got so there you go two of the 5,000 zombies done Next week we're gonna do the lady zombie, so we're gonna we're gonna maybe we'll put a pink dress on her. What do you guys think? But we'll be doing that next week. And I will be showing you some quick tips on how to get this box set done pretty quickly. So let's take it up top and let's get on out of here for another week, folks. Well there you have it. Zombies painted up, all ready to go. Sam, take us out of here and I'll see everybody next week. So that's it for this week, folks. Thanks for joining us. I hope that you've been able to pick up some tips and maybe tricks that you can instill in your own hobby painting uh, career. And uh, that's the whole reason me and Rob are doing this. Uh, next week, uh, we're not going to have a battling brushes because I'm going to be out of town with uh, uh, the Cool Mini or Not Expo up in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, Rob's got a lot of stuff going on next week at his workplace. So we just thought it best to just take the week off and then we'll be back full burn next week. Uh, or the week following and then that'll be the last week before our battle royale live and so hope that you can join us for both of those episodes it should be pretty cool until then thanks for joining and hey we'll see you on the flip side thanks so much for watching the dice tower videos find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com you can also find other great shows at dicetowernetwork.com I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.